Hello watch enthusiasts. Now I'm very often asked about the pros and cons of various different uh, watch finishes and more specifically of, of watch surface treatments. And these come in the form of PVD finishes, uh, gold finishes, as well as a variety of different uh, strengthening and hardening processes undertaken by certain technical brands. And so today I'd like to talk about uh, these finishes as a, a complete video and talk about the most common versions on the market and, and the ones which, uh, which you will most often come across. I'd also like to provide you with the pros and cons about these, because it's true, it's worthwhile knowing these uh, these aspects, especially when spending a few thousand pounds, especially, on a very uh, high-end luxury watch with one of these finishes. It is important to know the, the pros and cons of these, and indeed the ramifications of how they will age over time. And for today's featured picture, we have this fantastic shot of a modified Vostok Amphibia from Logan. And this is a great looking piece with, with that, uh, that steel case and, uh, and PVD bezel, as well as a white dial, which is fairly rare for an amphibia. As well as that, we have the, the curiosity of the history of the amphibia being born from uh, the Soviet Union's need for a dive watch. And as, as a result, it has a compressor case, where the case back actually becomes tighter under pressure, which are all areas which are very interesting about the amphibia. But uh, for those who don't know, uh, do join the Watch Guys, which is my watch group on Snups. And Snups is a, is a social media platform for sharing pictures of your collections and interests. And on the group, you can discuss matters of horology with myself and the other enthusiasts, and ask any questions, which I'll be, I'll be more than happy to answer personally. And so to really get the most out of the channel, do follow the link down below and join the group to be able to enjoy all these additional features. Now the first sort of finishing I'd like to talk about is probably the most common, and this is electroplating. And this is a manner which is often used to plate metals with, with other metals, such as gold. And this is a process which has been used since really the 1840s in terms of, of applying uh, gold to the surface of other metals. But it's become more and more prevalent as wristwatches in gold uh, were more and more sought after throughout the 20th century. And so this is most likely the way a lot of gold-plated watches have been coated, um, especially vintage timepieces. And there are a few provisos to this which I will talk about in, in due course, but this is the most common. And this is done effectively by producing a salt solution of the de desired plating metal and then using electrolysis um, to, to bond that, uh, that, 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 uh, that metal to the surface of a pre-prepared uh, watch case. And the watch is pre-prepared uh, using uh, copper and then nickel beforehand to reduce tarnishing and also in order to, um, to, to be able to, to strengthen and increase the bonds of that, that surface layer to the rest of the case. And the thickness of this, this layer, which is actually chemically bonded to the surface of the material, is between one and two and a half microns thick. And this is remarkably thin by comparison to other finishes, and is in fact one of the very, very thinnest of coatings. And this means that uh, over time, this is very susceptible to wear, and so as a result, a lot of vintage watches with gold-plated cases are, are, are seen with, uh, with areas where the base metal underneath is visible. And often the problem with this is that the base metal beneath is um, it will be, will be very prone to um, to, to reactivity and, and reactions, and so as a result, that's why you see on a lot of gold-plated watches you see a steel case back because against the wrist you can have allergic reactions to the the base metal underneath, which are unpleasant and irritating. Bearing in mind the fact that um, that these watches are sold as as um, as pieces to be worn regularly. And electroplating doesn't have to take place onto a base metal, it can sometimes be the case on something like Vermeil, which is what, uh, what Cartier do, which is where they, they plate a, 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 a sterling silver base with, uh, with a, a, gold, um, a gold coating. And that, that comes to about two and a half microns on their cases, um, but nonetheless it's still a very, a very thin finish and, um, uh, and does, does often define the, the value of a watch. As you can imagine, the, the price of a solid gold case and a gold plating are, are two very, very different things. Then we have gold filling. Now, gold-filled cases have a much thicker layer of gold, which is usually 10 or 14 karat gold, and is, is usually applied um, uh, in, in significantly greater layers to uh, a base metal or sometimes steel case. And this is, is, isn't really seen on, on a lot of modern watches, it's more often seen on, on vintage timepieces as a higher, higher uh, quality option to, to a, a simple uh, gold-plated case. And so as a result, these often have less wear on them, and actually little dents and dings won't go straight through the layer, but often deform it, which, which means that it will, it will be behave and perform much more similarly to a solid material, rather than the very brittle and easily scraped off surface that gold plating provides. Now the gold used for these particular processes are usually 10 and 14 karat golds, um, and are usually seen in yellow, car uh, in yellow gold simply because these are older, older styles of watches. And rose gold, um, especially in the sort of uh, ranges of watches that you would see these watches uh, having the, the process of gold filling, wouldn't be in the price range for something like, uh, like red gold or pink gold. And so as a result, one often sees a lot of, of yellow gold uh, Omega Seamasters from the past, which are, are gold filled, in order to give them that luster which steel simply wouldn't normally have. The final process in terms of a traditional gold application process is gold capping. And a gold-capped case is something rather peculiar, 
because it offers the, the low price of gold plating, or, or thereabouts, with the luster and, and the feeling of solid gold. Because this is something which isn't done anymore, really, and, and I think this is a shame. Because with gold capping, you actually melt uh, about a 0.3mm layer of solid gold to the surface of, of a steel case, and um, this is always done in a steel case just because of the expense of putting that gold on, would be too much to, 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 uh, to justify using a base metal case. And so as a result, you see a lot of watches, especially vintage Omegas, because this is a particularly prevalent um, uh, manner of, um, of, of, of producing them, especially in the 1950s and 60s where a layer of gold is applied to the top of the lugs and, um, and also the mid-case, but isn't applied to the case back or back of the lugs. And that's a good way of telling whether a watch is, is gold-capped or not. And this is, 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 is usually 18-karat gold, which, which is actually melted to the surface of the steel, rather than being chemically bonded. And this means that you actually get a quite thick layer of uh, up to 0.4 millimetres, but usually between 0.1 and 0.3 millimetres of gold. And this means that really, if, um, if you were to, uh, to remove this, you would have removed so much case that even if it were a steel watch, you would have disfigured the case permanently. So in many ways, uh, it's far less, less uh, easy to damage this finishing than other plated processes. And so this finish, though, um, though when polished will wear off, is significantly more, more durable if you're buying a vintage watch uh, with this sort of finishing, or indeed if you simply own a watch like this and want to know how to treat it. I'd recommend avoiding polishing of any sort on this sort of case, but it's not the end of the world if it has received polishing over the years, because it will remain, uh, remain, remain fairly sound and crisp in terms of its lines and finishing, which is a real blessing, especially, since, especially if this suffers a knock. Rather than knocking off the surface layer, it will put a dent into it, which is a real benefit in terms of, in terms of avoiding um, gaps of unsightly steel underneath that, that layer of, um, of gold. As well as that, the, 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 the base metal, because steel, um, rather than base metal, doesn't react, um, doesn't react as, uh, as openly with, uh, with the elements. There's less danger of it bubbling and coming off in that way if you, if you chip it, which is a real benefit as well. Now, electroplating as a whole has been replaced, for the most part, in most areas of the watch industry. Now, it's still used for things like movement plates and bridges and so on, which, which need to have that lustrous uh, appearance, or at least a corrosion-resistant surface. But in terms of cases, we rarely see this style of, of electroplating anymore, especially since it's, it's very prone to rubbing off and being removed over time. As a result, most brands now go for a PVD process, and that's physical vapour deposition. And physical vapour deposition is performed under a vacuum, and this is when you bombard the surface that you aim to coat with, with the material you aim to coat it with. And this often produces a much, much thicker layer of, of whatever the coating is going to be than it would be if you electroplated it. So whilst electroplating is often between 1 and, and 2.5 and microns thick, here we see up to 15 microns thick um, in terms of the thickness of the, the coating. And so as a result, this is often used uh, to make a material more scratch resistant and more, um, uh, more, more resistant to the elements in terms of bumps and nicks, especially with a material that's prone to this. One subcategory of this would be ion plating, and this is a similar process where you, you, you similarly bombard the surface with, with ions in this case. And here you, you effectively positively charge the, the metal case and then negatively charge the, the ions you aim to bombard it with, at which point you're able to, to connect both um, with electrostatic uh, attractions, and so as a result you're able to, to produce a quite strong um, a layer on the surface in terms of giving resistance to bumps and scratches. And it is worth noting that PVD uh, process does, does mean that the coating can, can still be removed quite easily if subject to a, a sharp knock or, or against something that's similarly hard, but it does provide greater resistance to something like, uh, like, like gold plating. And the most common material to plate with is titanium nitride, which is often used on the surface of these things, and, and in many ways um, this has been used quite extensively. Nitrides are generally the, 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 the materials that one often uses on the surface of these things. For example, the coating on, on old Seiko tuners from the 70s were, were nitride-based. And this does, does mean that you can get various colours. Titanium nitride, for example, comes in, in everything from, um, from very light grey to a, a much darker charcoal grey. And, and variations in colour do depend on what, what material you actually coat the, the, the steel with. But anyway, um, th this does provide you with a far greater variability and choice in terms of what you apply to the surface of, of a watch. Additionally, this has replaced gold plating in terms of electroplating uh, almost entirely, because this is cheaper to perform, and, and also the materials you can, you can apply are generally going to stay there much longer, and you can control their colour much more easily. And similarly, of course, the durability is so, so much greater than simply applying gold, bearing in mind that gold is a very soft, soft metal, um, is, is simply um, uh, remarkable.
And so as a result, uh, a lot of uh, gold-plated watches uh, don't exist anymore. For example, gold-plated watches in the the thousand to two thousand pound mark are surprisingly rare these days by comparison to watches in the past. And so as a result, one can see the movement in market value from um, uh, from having those those mid-tier gold-plated watches to really primarily having uh, solid gold watches in the luxury range and IP or, or PVD-plated ones in the in the lower sections. Now, often one sees DLC-coated watches being advertised in the higher price ranges um, as a sort of a, an alternative coating for watches, especially black ones. And this is fundamentally a PVD process. DLC is, is, has been referred to more as the, the paint applied um, rather than the process. And this is what's known as, as diamond-like carbon. And this is a form of material that's applied via the PVD process and provides a, a low friction, high hardness and a high corrosion resistant uh, surface, which is significantly improved over normal black, black PVD options. And this forms a sort of a, a carbon lattice on the surface of a case and makes it fundamentally more, more use in terms of being a durable steel uh, base with a, a black coating. And it is worth noting that uh, there are a lot of brands that, uh, that allow you to have these, uh, these coatings reapplied, such as, uh, for example, Breitling, who produce a lot of DLC watches, and will uh, more than happily reapply it for, for a significant fee, but will still do it if it does wear off over time. Now, PVD materials do have one common flaw, though. They do often suffer from what's often referred to as, uh, as eggshell um, uh, problems. And that's when the, the, the outer surface cracks because the, the layer beneath it, under impact, is softer. And so as a result, if you bump a watch, the, the steel underneath will deform and uh, the, the harder PVD coating on the surface won't, thus causing a, a cracking effect. And so as a result, several brands have tried to counter this, notably Zinn, who by using their tegumented cases, which uh, is fundamentally a steel which is, uh, is hardened to 1200 Vickers, and, um, and this is a surface coating, but uh, it's not a surface coating in that it's not a, a surface coating where there's a, there's a defined layer. Here the surface is hardened to a gradient into the steel, and this means there's a hard base onto which to put the PVD, and thus the PVD is far, far less likely to be scraped off or knocked off. And so as a result of this, Zim will only apply this PVD coating to their tegumented cases, which I think is fair, because if a buyer is, is, is spending money to have a PVD watch, um, it, it's, it's very reasonable for them to say that one has to take necessary precautions with the undercase to be able to handle this surface coating and for it to remain there almost indefinitely if, if, um, if, if care is taken with it. Another alternative style of coating is from Damasco, typically another German innovator, and this is uh, their damaged black layer. And they apply this to their nickel-free ice-hardened stainless steel, which is about 800 Vickers in hardness, bearing in mind the fact that uh, Zinn's tegumented surface coating is 1200 Vickers, and stainless steel, um, as a rule, at about 316L stainless steel, is about 190 Vickers um, as standard, so there is a significant hardness increase. But in this case, they've also layered it by, um, by, by producing uh, a simple, um, uh, basic um, uh, uh, style of, of PVD, but which is layered in order to produce a much harder um, style of, of application. So they have what they call an ion implantation zone, which is a thickness, um, a layer of thickness of uh, 1.5 um, microns. And this is a section of 1500 uh, Vickers in terms of hardness. And this, is, this fu functions as really an adhesive to hold the black layer on. And above that, they apply what they call their damaged black layer, which is a, um, a 7 micron thick layer, which has a hardness of about 2,500 Vickers. So it's an incredibly hard, incredibly, um, uh, incredibly um, uh, abrasion resistant surface coating, which means that they're able to produce a, a very strong and very resistant um, and stable surface with which you can use the watch on a daily basis without any fear of it coming off, which is very clever. And I think this sort of innovation does popularize PVD coatings, which often are worried about, I think, in the luxury watch segment. Of course, the most commonly seen protective layer is probably Seiko's Dia Shield, and this is seen on the vast majority of their sports stainless steel models above the price of um, of their, their their the start of their high end divers. So, for example, their their re editions um, of the the the, um, the 62 uh, MAS also feature this style of finishing, as well as the fact that this applies to their Marine Master models and um, tuners and various other sports models to add a certain degree of additional strength to the surface of the metal. And this, this reinforces the steel to about two to three times the normal hardness um, of stainless steel. And at the forefront of surface treatment for titanium, we have uh, Citizens Duratec. And this is a surface treatment which involves the application of nickel and oxygen to the surface of titanium to create about a 1500 Vicar coating. And we see a lot of hardened titanium cases, but none of them reach this sort of hardness, which is a testament to, to citizens' um, interest in, in reinforcing their sports watches, especially titanium models, which are often very susceptible to scratches in the case of most titanium sports watches. 
Anyway though, I'll conclude this video here, but do leave your comments down below as to what you think of, uh, or thought of this video, and what you think of these different finishes and their, their applications and, and their merit. And if you did enjoy the video, then please do like, share and subscribe to help the channel, and to be able to enjoy more content here in future. So thank you very much for watching, this is Arm on the Watch Guy, over and out.